Today we are cooking a brisket in the slow and seared kettle. This is gonna be the first brisket ever cooked on the slow and seared kettle. So in a way, it's not just that we're making brisket, we are making history. You buying that crap? <laughs> So guys, this is the SNS Grills Kettle. They're one of my channel sponsors. They just started making these. In fact, at this point, they're not even out yet. They're available for pre-order. Pre I will have a link to that below if you wanna check it out. But if you're a Weber person and you enjoy cooking on a Weber, um, you can do the exact same thing we're doing today. I will put a link to the slow and sear below so you can, so you can check that out. But before I started screwing around with this to get this shot, um, what I noticed was uh, this smoke, this is the Thermalworks X4. I'll have a link to that below before. It's a really nice thermometer. With the top vents half open and the smoke port all the way open, I was getting 225 just right on the nose. Now it's gotten a lot hotter since I've been raising the lid to talk to you guys. I've actually had to film this a couple of times because of technical problems, but anyways. Now with this brisket, it the brisket is choice grade. I would say on a scale of one to 10, it's about a six. Um, this is a curbside pickup and these days you kind of got to go with what you're what you've got But I'm doing some things to this one in order to help it out to make sure it doesn't dry out One of the things is I didn't have in, he heavily remove the fat cap I'm using that to protect the meat. I've got a really good rub on it. This is Harry Sue's beef rub I really enjoy that. I'll put a link to that below But if you're not a person who buys rubs off the internet start with just salt and pepper just 50 50 mix of salt and pepper and put a nice layer on that that is a good starting point if you're just if you're just starting out but later in the cook we're going to foil this and raise the temps and the reason we're going to do that is to get we want to get the brisket out of the cooker if you're worried about a brisket uh drying out the best thing you can do is get it cooked as fast as possible so that's what we're going to do today we're going to wrap it in foil and raise the temps on the second half of this cook to get this finished up our slow and sear is burning Kingsford Professional. It's actually way too hot right now. I'm gonna pull, pull that, put that lid down here in a second. And also um, pecan chunks. I got four small pecan chunks. We've got our water pan doing its thing. You want the water pan to be right up next to your fire like the slow and sear has it. You actually want it to boil off during the first part of your cook because that moisture in the cooking environment actually helps the smoke ring to form. There's a lot of good things that happen. Seeing that water pan boiling like that makes me very, very happy. So anyways, I'm gonna put the lid back on this before it gets too hot. I'm gonna close this down a little bit to bring my temps back down, but I wanted to show you guys how we are cooking today. I'm just gonna let this thing run for the next three or four hours and we'll come back and take a peek and uh, see where we're at. But in, until then, we'll let, we'll let this little brisket get happy. So we'll see you in a few. All right, guys, we are four hours into this cook from the moment we see, yeah, see, this is, this is exactly what you want to see. This is a really, really nice bark formation. Um, I'm giving it the scratch test. That's when you just scratch the surface of the bark and see if it stays put. We are almost there. The internal is at 155.7. So I'm going to go ahead and give this probably another 30 minutes. I think that's all it's going to need. After that, I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in foil uh, with some beef broth. If I have it, I think I have it. If not, I'll just use a little bit of water and let the temps of the cooker rise up to around 275 or 300 degrees. And that will be what we, how we finish up this cook. Um, so yeah, but this is, this is going exactly like I hoped it would. Slow and Sears doing great. It's probably got a third, maybe half of the fuel uh in place at this point i'm gonna add a little bit more not because it, not because it needs it but just because eventually i'm gonna have to so i might as well i might as well do it now while i have the lid open but yeah this is going perfect i can't wait to try this this is gonna be a really good brisket i can already tell so here we are that's where we're at this is the four hour check-in and uh, thanks for staying with me this far 
To the end, my friends, to the end. been two and a half hours actually you know what I'll give you a complete breakdown here here in a minute if you've been with me this long I'm gonna give you some information here in about a couple of minutes it's gonna be worth worth the wait so once you put it in the foil this is the basic idea once you put it in foil and the internal temperature probe says it's about 200 degrees all that means is it's time to start checking it and by checking it I mean take your probe and stick it in a few different places and wait till it goes in just like butter. Everybody always says warm butter. I don't agree with that. I think it's it's more like refrigerated butter. If you wait till it goes through like warm butter, you're gonna find yourself with pot roast on your hands. Um, this, is, this is almost there. I'm just waiting for this spot right here to give, to give up a little bit. But basically, once you hit 200 degrees, check it every 15 minutes, like clockwork. You go back and check it every 15 minutes and wait for that feeling for it to feel like it's going in like butter. Once that is, once you reach that point, you pull it and set it in a cambro. I'll talk about that in a second for two to four hours. And oh, 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 oh this is the fun part, y'all. Hang with me for a second. And uh, I'm gonna talk to you about timing on all this stuff. This is a 12 pound brisket, 12 and a half pound brisket. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. You may have actually seen it on the label, but in case you're wondering, it is a 12 and a half pound brisket. I'm only bringing this up because everybody always asks. Whenever I put this in a video, people ask me what it is. This is just a big insulated box that usually restaurants use to take catering food from place to place. Most people don't need it. I'll put a link below in case you're interested, but uh, for most people, a regular like igloo ice chest or, you know, Coleman or whatever with, uh, you just take the meat, wrap it up in towels to protect the walls of the ice chest and then put it, put the meat in there. It's going to keep it plenty warm and it's a lot cheaper than these. So, um, but like I said, every time I do a video and put this guy in it, somebody asks what it is. So I thought I'd, I might as well take a moment and explain it. Um, timing, usually the way this works, seven in the morning. I'd start my cooker, let it get up to temp, then I would prep my brisket. I do all my trimming, I do all my seasoning, and then if there's any time left over, I just hang out until eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, I put the brisket in the cooker at 225 to 250. This is, it's a mix of, what we're doing is a mix of low and slow and hot and fast. You kind of get the best of both worlds. So at eight o'clock, the brisket would go into the cooker where it would stay until about noon. Now. I'm giving you timelines because that's really important to some people, but I want you to know that I don't cook by time and I'm not contradicting myself. It's just when you use, especially when you use the hot and fast side, you get some consistency in your cooks that you can kind of count on. So, but on the low and slow part, the first part of the cook, the first four hours, um, it's at 225. At noon, I start checking the bark for doneness, like basically the fingernail test I was telling you about before it is almost always done at noon. In fact, it's probably done about 11, but at, at noon, I pull the brisket off, I'd wrap it in foil, and I'd put some sort of liquid inside, close it back up, and then, I, like I said just now, I will let that run until about two, 
2 o'clock is usually about when the probe or the internal gets to about 200 and then I just start checking. I take that probe and I pop it in and if it's not ready, I set my clock for 15 minutes later and set it again because you can't really rely on your probes as a measure of doneness really ever, but especially when it's wrapped in foil because it's kind of a pressure cooking environment my wife calls it she calls, she's, it's like the microwave she calls that fake heat because it goes away really fast well it's similar to that when you're cooking brisket and foil so i just check it and I'm, all i'm looking for is doneness that is almost always by three o'clock at three o'clock i pull it out i put it in my cambro when i was using an ice chest i would put it in an ice chest and usually we're eating dinner about five or six o'clock the latest seven so that's my timeline i'll go back over it again First four hours, low and slow, 225 to 250. Once it passes the scratch test, which is almost always around noon, it's good to go. Raise the temps up to about 275 to 300. I'm not sure I said that the first time. Foil the meat for, it'll be about two hours, but basically until the internal of the probe is at 200 degrees. And that's when I start checking for doneness. Every 15 minutes, it usually probably about two and a half hours on average. It's done, I pull it out, I rest it it's for two to four hours before we're ready to eat. That's how I cook for people when they come over to my house. You get the advantage of the low and slow, that smoke, all that good stuff on the front end. You get that good bark development. And then on the back end, you get the brisket out of the cooker sooner. You, you get more of a juicy cook because that's just a characteristic of, of hot and fast cooking. You also have some consistency in your timing. You're not spending all day on it. And uh, at, the, at the expense of sometimes your bark is not as crispy or as dark or as whatever as, as, as you would like, but that's the trade-off for basically not having to stay up all night if I don't want to. So it, that, is my, that is my strategy. That's how I cook brisket. If you came over to my house for dinner, that's probably how I would cook it. So um, it's not the only way I cook brisket, but when I, when I need a go-to move, that's my go-to move. So I hope you guys find that helpful. We're gonna let this sit again for a couple of hours. It's getting really late here. So probably two hours I'm gonna do on the short end of this and we're gonna taste test this and I can't wait. Uh, appreciate you watching, but this is gonna be, a, this is gonna be fun. I can't wait for the, uh, the payoff. <laughs> to laugh because um i pulled the brisket out and i could immediately smell central texas i mean this was really really good like i mean the, just the smell of smoke that pecan wood mixing with the beef smell and it's just uh it's just it's just perfect now the the bark turned out turned out good it's uh, it's got a nice formation it's a little softer it's not going to be crispy or crunchy or anything like that i mean this is really this is really easy to cut through, but you can taste it. It has a nice buildup of flavor. That rub that Harry Sue uh, made did a good job. Got a great little smoke ring on this. Turned out great. I definitely taste, you know, salt and pepper. There is a touch of sweetness. There's a touch of, I think it's cumin, definitely garlic. Um, a lot of times, um, to be honest with you with brisket, a lot of times after all day in the cooker, the nuances between rubs get lost. So that's why I say, if you wanna start brisket with just salt and pepper, that is absolutely just fine. Um, but this is definitely a good rub. I, I really enjoy it. Um, flavor wise, actually, let me try this again. Okay, yeah, the smoke flavor is really, really good. You can definitely taste it. Texture wise, it's very, very juicy. It is too tender. This is on the verge of being that pot roast that I was talking to talking to you about. This is why this is why I say you don't cook it until it is probe tender like warm butter. I didn't. I pulled it out when it tasted when it felt like it was um, going through cold butter, just like I told you I did. And it's still on the on the verge of being too tender, which is of course a problem that me and my family will have to bear. Actually, it's not a problem at all 
with, uh, with backyard cooking brisket. It's actually great. Nobody is gonna complain about this, but I notice it. And I'm not gonna try to pass it off. For us, it's not, not a problem. It's, it's great. But I would say it's another reminder. Um, after you let your brisket rest, make sure that you burp your cooler, or in my case, your Cambro every 15 minutes or so for maybe the first 45 minutes to an hour, or you can just leave it on the counter um, for the 20 minutes or so before you put it in your cooler to let it rest. Because if you don't, it continues to cook. And I, I know that it's just been a while since I cooked a brisket and I was thinking about some editing stuff I was doing for this video. So, but keep that in mind, you'll be fine. And honestly, it's not that big a deal. This is really good. No one's, no one in this house is gonna complain. This was a great cook. I really appreciate you guys joining me on it. If you want more information about that cooker, I will. I did a video that talks about all my thoughts on this cooker. I'll put a link to that right there. Also put a link to my favorite brisket cook I've ever done. I'll put that right here. You can click either of those right now and check those out. Again, this one's on the cooker. This is my probably my favorite cook ever with me and my buddies. So y'all check that out. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.